Hi everyone, I'm Moody Boo, the Fragrant Nomad, and I am back with another perfume from the House of Zoologist. This is one of my favorite houses because their whole concept and their fragrances are really unique, very niche, some of them. Um, and I find them so intriguing because some of them, I don't care for at all. And others I'm wacko about. The latest one, Cow. Um, I blind bought as soon as I saw it was available at Lucky Scent. I popped for it without question, especially once I saw the notes, but I kind of suspected milk might be involved. <laughs> so anyway, I love it. Koala and Cow, both, I blind bought, and I have not regretted it. They are fabulous. Camel and Chipmunk, I did get samples prior to before purchasing. This house, besides the artwork, and it's a white bottle. Nice. Um, <clears throat> this perfume isn't as gourmand as I thought it was going to be, especially with the notes involved. Oh. My first impression is that it's a sweet, creamy, milky, floral with a hint of greenness, fresh, moist, spring green in there. And I love it. I am absolutely in love with cow. And I'm lactose intolerant, so it's really kind of a dichotomy for me to love this. But luckily I'm not drinking it, I'm wearing it. And the skin does fine with it, so we're good. So this is a two ounce bottle and it's 18% concentration. Top notes are sage and apple. Heart notes are milk, lily of the valley, heliotrope, violet, jasmine. Base notes are cedarwood, vetiver, benzoin, musks, and amber. And mainly what I get is the milky notes, the floral notes. I think it's the vetiver and the violet maybe that I'm, I'm getting that kind of green spring kind of a, a feel to it. Maybe some of the apple, it might even be a green apple, which I don't care for in perfume if it's a starring note. If it's a background note, I'm okay with it. It can add some nice sweet tartness to a perfume. And this, it is definitely green though. And it's definitely floral. So if you are expecting 100% gourmand, you will be disappointed. If you leave your mind open to zoologist, which you should always do with the, the perfume houses like zoologist and Centauri and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera because they are very niche. So don't expect anything if you're blind buying from them. Just go into it with an open nose and an open mind and an open heart and you will open your doors to a larger fragrance world, I guarantee it. If you just get rid of the expectations, that's, that's something that I find myself struggling with quite a bit is I will love a house so much and so I will get a perfume or a sample from the perfume perfume or blind buy a bottle because I have so much confidence in the house and then I'm super disappointed because I had high expectations big mistake huge so I try not to do that and I didn't have any expectations for this I really didn't other than it was zoologist so I knew it was going to be unique and it is, but it's a little more mainstream than some of theirs, I think, which is okay. Um, I think it, it will appeal to a wider audience than say um, Koala or something like that, which is a little more niche in my opinion. This though, it is a milky floral with bright spring green background notes. That's, that's all I can say about this. It is so lovely. And because it's got the milky notes and the floral notes, you can wear this in cooler temperatures, no problem. It's sweet, 
So that tends, I tend to wear those more in the cooler temps as opposed to hotter temps when they can potentially bloom. This one, I don't think you're going to have that kind of a problem because the sweet isn't from the gourmand notes. It's not from the milky notes. It's definitely from the floral notes, I think, anyway. And with those green notes and those, some of those other earthy notes really grounding it, I think you could absolutely wear this in warmer temps, too. Hot temps? Maybe. We'll see. Because I definitely will be trying it out in the hotter temps, so I'll find out how much it does bloom. But to me, when floral sweetness blooms in the heat, it's a different experience than if gourmands bloom, like a vanilla, as opposed to, say, a heliotrope or a lily of the valley. Even though lily of the valley is a note that I am slowly getting into. It's a little too soapy for me at a lot of times, but in this, it just adds a, a, another grounding factor to all this milky floral greenness that just helps make it more unisex, I think. I think it will be interpreted touch on the feminine side only because it is sweeter, but I think it's completely unisex. I would love to smell this on a man. Absolutely. Now, it wouldn't be one that my husband would want to wear. This isn't his style. Um, his favorite, I think, is uh, Straight to Heaven. Yeah, that's the name of it, uh, by Killian. And then Liquid Night by um, A Lab on Fire. Um, and one of that is because that's my favorite on him. But that's beside the point. He still really likes it. So that's more his style. So I, he wouldn't try this. That's all I'm saying. And I don't want to take him out of his comfort zone. It's a big enough deal just that I get him wearing fragrances the past couple of decades because he was not the kind of guy that really found that necessary considering he got a chemical burn in his nose in his 20s and he can't smell most perfume notes. So anyway, squirrel. So I'm back. And this, the performance is okay. Um, I was a little surprised considering the notes in here that it didn't perform a little bit better than it does. I get about seven hours and it becomes a skin scent right about hour six though. You have to really go in for the deep sniff in order to detect it much after hour six. So I do wish it performed a little better. Now I do only do two sprays. From what some of you have told me, that's crazy. Some of you do 20 sprays, at least you see. So I would go through perfume so fast if I did that. And I just, I find personally a lot of perfumes. Now I will go up to four sprays with some perfumes that are freshies, don't perform well, blah, 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 blah. But, um... I find personally two sprays, I can detect that perfume for hours and hours. So I figure if I can detect it when I've sprayed it on my wrist or the back of my neck or something like that, then other people will too if they come close enough to me. Now, if I'm going out to a club, I keep saying that it's never going to happen again. My husband tried to get me to go out and shoot some pool, um, but we couldn't find a place we wanted to go. So, because a lot of the places COVID, you know, shut down just the regular old pool halls because nobody was going. So, um, we have to find a place. That will be an exercise in anxiety for me because um, I don't know if I'm quite ready to be out in public with a bunch of people. A lot of them don't give a toot about their health or other people's health. <laughs> That makes me a little concerned as a nurse. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm ready yet, but I'm trying. So baby steps, regardless, a big dance club is out of my future entirely of that, I'm sure. Um, it's just not my shtick anymore, even though I used to be a hell of a dancer. I could get down with the best of them on a dance floor, let me tell you. Um, I learned from this guy that was in the military when I was, I always had some decent rhythm. So I had some moves, you know, I could 
hold a, a beat for a short period of time anyway. And I learned from this guy that um, was in the military and he was an awesome break dancer. He, this was back in the, see it would have been late 80s. This boy could do some moves. And so we had a thing about going to cowboy bars and then we dance normal. And then suddenly, as soon as there was a little bit, you know, to Garth Brooks or something like that, and, and he'd, he'd drop it and start spinning and shit. And it was hilarious to look at the cowboy's faces thinking he was having a seizure or something. <laughs> so anyway, he taught me how to, how to dance, basically the way I still dance. Haven't really updated much, but... It's just not my thing anymore. It's too many people breathing my air and I don't know. It, everybody's body's touching mine and it's, it's, I've been groped so many times when I've been out in the club that it's just, it's just not for me anymore. But long story longer, if you were to go to a club, you could definitely blast this four sprays and be okay. 20 sprays, I don't recommend that for anybody. <laughs> I, I really suggest you go to an ENT and find out if there's something wrong with your sniffer. Because if you can't smell your perfume after 20 sprays, after a few hours, like uh, one of you guys was telling me uh, recently, yeah, I'm concerned that there might be something going on um, up inside your nose there and, and is causing you to have some anosmia going on. I know something about this because my husband has it. He'll do like five, six sprays and I don't say anything because I want him to be able to smell it too. So, anyhow, doesn't perform great. It projects uh, about arm's length the first couple hours, then it comes close um, within elbow's length and then it comes even closer. It kind of goes in stages. It doesn't have a big trajectory except I think the floral and the milky get just a little less as the greener notes and the earthier notes come up to greet them and become kind of equal across the board at that point. Um, it has a bit of expensive hand lotion vibe to it. So, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I will say this one is a little different because it, it doesn't have a trajectory this way as far as the length of wear and the changing from top to dry down, but it does from distance. This one is a strange one for me. It changes when you get closer to it like this. So when you're smelling it from a distance, you get more of the cedar wood and the amber in there. But once you bring it closer, that's when you get more of the florals, the milky note, and those wet green notes that I keep discussing. And I will say, when you're coming in, there are times where I get close and I get more of the violet and the heliotrope um, than I do other times. Other times, it's just kind of a floral mix. But there are times when I go in and I definitely get violet, which if I'm not mistaken, violet, I believe... Isn't, didn't I read somewhere that violet is the most fleeting of floral notes? That, you know, you may smell it for a short time, but it usually poofs out pretty quickly. Well, this one sticks around a while. And it, it mingles so well with those green notes that it just is, mmm. And violet is not a note I love. Neither is lily of the valley. But in this perfume, in these proportions, they really add something to this perfume. I, I am so impressed. So impressed. Oh, I, I love it. I love it. It's gourmand, it's floral, it's green. And then if you stay out from a distance and smell it, it's got some earthy amber to it and cedar wood. This house is really good because they really give you a diverse um, spectrum of perfumes that are all so unique from each other. 
With this one, Lucky Scent, I requested elephant, rhinoceros, and T-Rex, I think. And rhinoceros, I really like. Um, I think it was T-Rex that I wasn't real sure about. One really for me. But elephant wasn't bad. But I'm I'm gonna explore rhinoceros more because that one that one caught my nose. So anyway, have I said everything? Mid range, it's available at Lucky Scent. Of course, you can always buy it on Zoologist Scent. That's who I'm reading the notes off of. I didn't want to trust Fragrantica. Brand new release, the artwork. I mean, seriously, Centauri and Zoologist are probably my all-time favorite perfume bottles. I just think, you know, I've got the Mickey Mouse from uh, House of Siage, and it's cute and it's blingy, but that's just copying an already done design. These are all unique. I even like the shape of the bottle on the side, how it widens out at the bottom. I love the cap, and the artwork is incredible, and of course, Sindari's bottles are perfect. All right, well, that was it for Zoologist Cow. I hope you join me. I'm going to be finishing painting my Louis Vuitton um, Speedy. Um, I did work on it during the weekend and I didn't film it. I did take some pictures. I might post one up here just so you can see. Uh, I'll probably forget, so don't count on it. Um, and um, yeah, get it all done, at least one side, and kind of talk about what I think I'm going to do on the other side, if I do anything. I'm not sure yet. So I haven't decided. And I also have uh, reviews coming up of La Covent uh, Hatai, I think it's called. And then Milano uh, Fragranza uh, Panettone, I think is how you say it. I've got a review of this one coming up as well. Love. So, yay. I also have a review of Aaron Terrence Hughes um, Oxytocin coming up. Um, <laughs> This was sent to me with another perfume purchase um, from a gal on, I think it was on Poshmark I bought. Anyway, whatever. Um, really loving this. I'm so surprised because to me it's kind of a rose oud kind of an aroma, but I'm digging it. And I haven't found one that I'm really in love with from this house as of yet, but this, this one is really making me happy. <laughs> so anyway, reviews of all of that coming up. And so thank you again for being here and I will talk to you soon. And don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell and comment if you want. If you don't, it's all good. I still love you. And use your own nose. Peace.